Diyos. Didisiplinahin mo, di mo naman kilala. Kasama ang loob. Pero pag kilala mo ang pare mo, bilang obispo, ha, maintindihan niya kung bakit mo ginagawa iyon. Kasi sa ulat, uli, kapatid mo siya. So, ang palo, hindi bugbog. Ha? The rod symbolizes discipline. There cannot be any learning without discipline. Discipline is part of church life. That is why we have laws, regulations. For us priests, we have what we call the protocol. Ano yun? Boundaries. Boundaries. Halimbawa, ang kwarto ng pare, bawal mong papasok sa sino man. Boundary. Kung may papasok, hindi pwede isang tao lang. Kinakailangan may kasama. Boundary. <coughs> Nagkaroon ng lahat ng dioceses ng protocol. What does that mean? To frighten us? No. To protect the church and to protect the priest. Gets nyo? That's very important. The rod. Number three, oil. Ito lagi nakalimutan ng tao, oil eh. Why? The oil is medicinal. Therapeutic. Healing. Lots and lots of oil. What does that mean? The shepherd is a wounded healer. In other words, there must be opportunities of reconciliation, of dialogue, of patching things, of closure. And that's very important, especially for us priests, when we change assignments. Naku, sabi ni Oscar Cruz noon during our meeting, you know we cannot blame the priest because the bishops do not find the time to do closure. They, they, they change assignments without even discussing what happened to you, how did you feel, what were the wounds inflicted on you before you moved to another one. And when you move to another assignment, you bring your wounds again there. And as you grow older, you're such a wounded person, you either transcend or you become bitter and resentful. And you don't like bitter priests. You like joy-filled priests who can accept the wounds. That is why the image of CBCP that followed PCP2 is the image not of perfection, but the image of the earthen vessel. That's a beautiful image of priestly life in the Philippines. Earthen vessels. Why? The issues that we have, burnout. Pagod ang pare. And what is burnout? The number of jobs you have to perform? No! You know what burnout is? The lack of affirming relationships. Yung hindi ka man lang sinasabihan, Pader, ang ganda naman. Wala ka na naririnig na ganun. Parang lagi na lang ang paring mali. Wala ka nang naririnig na, Pader, you did well. You know, sa akin parokya, Diyos ko, talagang. It, 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 tapos ang problema pa ngayon, wala kang private life. Ay, upload pa sa Facebook. Kung saan ka nakikita. Ano ginagawa mo? Ano yung mali mo? Tama? Are, are you getting me? Yes. What does that mean? When assignments are being given, there needs to be closure. And what? Endorsement o mag-usap yung aalis sa dadating. Hindi aalis, nasa hindi mag-uusap, tapos pagkapalit, yung papalit, sisiraan pa yung umalis. At maririnig naman yung umalis. Anong maiiwan yon Samaan ng loob, siraan. Ang dating matalit na magkaibigan, ngayon ay matalit na magkaaway. Na kapag may presbyteral meeting, ira pa na at hindi na magkakatabi. Pero my God, they were classmates before. You see what I mean, fathers? Yes. But that was processed by CBCP. 
the area of ordained ministry is indeed something that we need to look at. That servant leadership is how we use and manage our power, the power of holy orders. Actually, si BCP may tinatawag na Commission on Bishops. Ang chairman nun ay si Cardinal Vidal. Siya ang magmi-minister sa mga kapatid na obispo. Kasi he is the big brother. No? Big brother. No? Eh, talaga naman. Vidal and Rosales are now the two most respected bishops in the country. No? But if you study them, neither one of them hold a doctorate degree. They're more brothers. See, having one, Cardinal Rosales, working with him closely during his eight years as his catechetical director, sabi ko, kapag ako'y pasulatin ng testimonya para sa kanyang beatification, huwag mong sasabihin at baka magalit. Ako ang magsusulat. Bakit? Nung ginawa na yung kardinal, kwento lang, ginader kaming manilenyo sa chapel ng Arsubispado. Kami lang ha, only manilenyos. Pag dumating naman kami, kadarating niya ng umaga galing sa Roma. Nakasutahan na siya. Nakasutahan na pa naman niya yung, yung usual na yung simpleng parang monk. Okay, pumasok. At yung pectoral cross ay yung kahoy. Nung nagsimula siya magkahoy, lahat ng obispo nagkahoy na rin eh. <laughs> Doon nandun na siya, sabi niya, pagkatapos mag-bespers, tumayo. Pumalak pa kami, standing ovation. Sabi, upo na kayo, upo na. Ako'y kadarating lamang sa Roma. Ha? At ako'y ginawa ng kardinal. Alam nyo, may mga bago akong dekorasyon. Pakikita ko ang mga bago akong dekorasyon, ha? He reached out from his pocket, pinakita niya yung sing-sing. Laki ng sing-sing na ito. Ito daw ang sing-sing ng kardinal. Sabi ni Pope Benedict. Mm. O, ito pa. Dalawang dekorasyon. Yung kanyang skull cap. Iba na kulay. Matingkad na pula. Mm. Fathers, hindi ito makakatulong pagpunta sa langit. Ang daan patungo sa langit ang mga mahihirap. Mahalin ninyo ang mahihirap, langit ang makikita ninyo. Balikan natin ang pagmamahal kay Lazaro. Ano mang magaling. Basta <laughs> malinig ay patungong lang. Sabi ng mga pare, o oh, sige, magmumuna naman kayo dyan. Ano yung sabihin nun? You know, the, the good cardinal is focused. Focused. In his simplicity. The version of Francis for us is dense. If they have in the universal church a Francis, study Francis, our Holy Father. He wears the same chasuble. The same chasuble he wore when he was made, when, when he was uh, way, installed as Pope. No fanfare. <coughs> then says like that. Kung hanggat, ma hanggat maaari hindi siya uupo sa katidra ng Maynila, hindi siya uupo. Kaya ang ginagawa namin, nakarangan namin, Eminence, doon kayo, oh, doon, sige na, doon po kayo. Ay, gusto kong kasama ninyo. Hindi po, maupo po kayo doon, utang na loob po. Bakit? For him, power is nothing. And for him, sabi nga niya, power is dangerous. I go back to St. Augustine. When I am afraid to what I am to you, I am consoled for what I am with you. To you, I am a bishop. With you, I am a Christian. The first is an office, the second is grace. The first is a danger, the second salvation. St. Augustine. <clears throat> That's ordained ministry. Reflection lang, no? That is why the, the, the PCP2 provided what? An understanding of 
priestly life as servant leader. Number two, religious. Who are the religious? Actually, this antedated Vita Consecrata. That was a later development. But before, in PCP2, they still call it prophet servants. There are two contributions of PCP2 to religious life. What are they? That when religious live the vows in context, when the religious live the vows as context, huh, what happens? They live a prophetic life. When they live the vows in context, they live a prophetic life. I'll show you. It's a religious because we have religious women here. So that's men. sa mga madre. Ayan. Okay. Here's a contribution to PCP2. When religious life live their life as prophecy, namely, one who speaks the word in context, then that is their major contribution to the renewal of the church in the Philippines. Now, let's look at prophecy. What is prophecy? Prophets nurture and nourish an alternative consciousness and perception that are against the predominant culture of society. All right? That's prophets. They present an alternative. If this is the predominant society, well, prophets present the alternative. And the alternative is that prophets are primarily mystics who seek the face of God and live a life that denounces and proclaims the life of Jesus. So there is a twofold, a, a, a double-edged sword lived by the prophet. The prophet denounces, the prophet energizes. You study the Old Testament. Sino ang prophetic denunciation? Jeremiah, Ezekiel, John the Baptist. Sino ang prophetic energizing? Isaiah. What does that mean? Every prophet uses a double-edged sword. Now, are the religious prophets? The answer is yes. When they live the vows. Oh, look at this. It's from PCP2. When the religious lives poverty. Oh, may tanin ko mga madre. Sisters, anong ibig sabihin ng poverty sa inyo? Sister Nora. <laughs> ang, pa ang poverty po ay pagiging detached. Yeah, ano pa? Nang ano? Detached po sa mga bagay na makalupa. Hindi, <laughs> 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 yung hindi ka ba ma-attach sa, sa wealth, sa power, uh, sa ganun po. Uh, Tapos, Nasa ilalim din po ng poverty ang obedience kasi detached ka sa sarili mo. Kalooban. Hmm. Tapos... Wala akong pera, in other words. Wala akong pera, pero nakakahingi ng pera. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nagbibigay pa pag nanghihingi. Well, depende ko sa gagastos eh. Hmm. Kaya kayo, nagtatanong lagi nung kasama ko kayo, ito bang chinelas na ito ay need or want? Yes. <laughs> Nung nagbigay ako ng retreat sa mga katikista, yung mga madre, nakatigil doon sa eskaparate. Sabi ko, kanina pa kayo tingnan tingin diyan. Ano ba yung tingnan ninyo? nag kami, Monsignor, kung pagbili ng chinelas na ito ay need and want. Ang sabi ng mga madre, need daw. Ang sabi ko naman, want. Hindi <laughs> pa kayo magkasundo. Eh, hindi, hindi sila makaalis-alis doon, nakatingin sila sa chinelas na yon. Nagre-reflect pa. Nagre-reflect pa. Ganon. Kasi manghihingi sa... Superiora. Superiora. 
Okay. Ganun ba kayo, Father Charles? Mga Dominican, more or less. Wala kayo pera? I mean, we are given also parang allowance. allowance. Hanggang dun lang. Pero uh, we, if we need a special budget for our apostolate, we have to okay. ask permission. But if, one, if you want to wear, a, uh, you want to buy a pair of shoes? Okay, we, yun yung allowance namin is, is meant also for personal. Uh, Eh, kung halimbawa magbigay ang benefactor sa iyo, Father Charles, ng dalawang pairs of uh, Gucci shoes. Gucci. Uh, tatanggapin mo ba? Ano sasagutin mo? <laughs> Thank you. Kung medyo malaki, I might ask the superior if I could have. Ah, so you have to ask the superior. Kung medyo malaki talaga. Medyo malaki. Malaki sa patos? Kung malaki talaga. Malaki talaga. So talaga nagsasabi pa kayo, ha? Kasi kami mga diocesan, hindi. No? <laughs> Oy, sumagot kayo. <laughs> Di ba? You can own property, eh. Right? Okay? Isa nga yun sa sinasabi sa atin, eh. Yung paghawak ng pera. Pero nakalagay sa PCP to, lahat ng pare dapat ay may evangelical poverty na. Oo, lahat. Ano ba ito? Lahat kami. Transparent. Transparent daw. <laughs> oh, tignan nyo ang sinasabi ng PCP2 sa mga regarding evangelical poverty. When a religious lives evangelical poverty, what happens? He or she denounces the exploitation of material possessions or resources. He or she denounces greed that leads to impoverishment. Why? Because what does the religious proclaim? He or she proclaims detachment, as what mentioned by Father Charles and Sister Nora. Call for simplicity, trust entirely in God. Tanungin ko nga kayo, what do you mean by simplicity? Simplicity is not destitution, huh? Hindi. What is simplicity? Basics. It's a lifestyle. Lifestyle. Is the habit simplicity? Yes, the habit. Kasi hindi ka mag-iisip kung oh, ngayon, mag-paypaint ako, yung tabelo, bukas ko lang belo. Pwede mo gano'n? Okay, anong sabi ng Bishop of Yar bago mamatay? Ay. Ah. Sige na, anong sabi ng Bishop of Yar? Bago mamatay, huwag daw magtatanggal ng belo. Tapos? Huwag daw mahihili sa ibang kongregasyon na nagtatanggalan na ng mga habit. Yan. Ako, nakalagay yun. Nakatape yun, no? Nakatape yun. Huwag. O, yan. Sister, ano ba? Huwag mahihiyang magtanong. Very bad. O, ito ano yun, sister? Oh, Oo, mananaghihili sa ibang congregation, sa kasuotan ng ibang congregation. Kaya, the habit is simplicity. Tama? Kasi yung kumisan yung habit na yan, pwedeng nasuot na ng isang madling na mata. Tama? Totoo po. Totoo, totoo. At saka pwede yung mga limang araw mong suot. At saka pwede yan, kahit itong araw mong suot yan. Di ba? Kung ka nagpapalit, Kahit ibang araw din lang. Kung sa formation po namin mo, pag hindi pa marumi, hindi hindi magpapalit. Pero yung undergarments, araw-araw ko natapalit. Hindi ko nalapitan. May umaalingaw ng ugiyan. Maski yung yung labas nyo, kasi kayo may apron. Ang dami nyo susun eh. Kasi may apron pa kayo. Kasi po, Monsignor, di mga misyonera nga po kami. Pagka pumupunta mo kami sa mga... Sumarip pa doon. Pag pumupunta kami sa mga mission, sa mga bukid, sa mga bundok, pantulog namin itong pang ilalim at kumot na namin itong pang ibaba. Multi-purpose. Multi-purpose. Hindi makabalik. Alikarita mo. Kasi ang sinasabi sa amin, kung halimbawa nagpunta kami sa misyon, hindi naman kami ready. So, pwede itong aming, ito na yung sinasabi po ni Sister Nora, ito na yung pantulog namin at ito na yung pangkumot, just in case na hindi kami naka, nakabalik sa kumbento. 
Yeah, so, kung pwede kayong umikot na ang dala nyo lang ay sepilyo. <laughs> Tama, <laughs> diba? <laughs> Kasi, yung simplicity, hindi siya nag-iisip kung pupunta na sa beauty parlor. Yes. Oh, ay, buka pa. Wala na. Kasi pwede, 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 hindi gina, hindi ba kayong mga madre? Ay, ito, makikita pa yung mga buhok. O yan, nakikita pa eh. Pero yung sasabihin mo simplicity, because going to the parlor is expensive. Tama? Is that simplicity? No. Okay, ito. <laughs> In other words, the habit is a sign of simplicity. Am I right? Okay. Sign of consecration. Sign of consecration. Pero in terms of uh, practicality, you don't think about pag-aayos ng buho. You don't have to go to the boutique to buy new clothes. Kaya it's a big challenge for religious who took off the habit. You know, say secular clothing. To really spend. Am I right? Unless they are secular institute. Right? Ang mga daughters of charity, society of an apostolic life, but they wear the blue. That's it. Okay. So, Poverty expresses faith in God who has a love of preference for the poor and listens to their cry. It leads us to create communities of sharing. sharing. Am I right? PCP to yan. It brings us, can we read sisters? Kayo lang. Sige. It brings, it brings us to a relationship with the poor, a relationship that must shape the life and weakness of religious, both as regards life, style, and apostolate. Actually, during our meetings, one of the bishops said, lagi na lang inaatake ang mga pare, ang mga obispo. Sabi na itong obispo, ang iharap natin, mga madre, sa kanila. <laughs> Wala silang mapupula sa madre. Why? Fathers, you would agree with me. The sisters follow a strict orario. Tama? Wake up at five, Prayers at 5.30, Mass at 6. Breakfast together, apostolate. Look at the life of Teresa of Calcutta. She was in the dark night of the soul for 50 years. She even questioned the existence of God. But one thing that she held was that she followed her orarium to the letter. And that was her salvation. So, hindi mo alam nung may crisis. Because she was there faithful in the orario. Now, chastity. Okay? When the religious lives a chaste life or chastity, they denounce sex, divorce from love, commitment and responsibility. Women and children are abused and exploited. They denounce that. That is why they can strongly say that they are against all forms of exploitation. That is why they proclaim what? The ability to universalize affectivity. To direct love towards God's people, especially through compassion and service. That's what you proclaim. Therefore, sisters, pakibasa, together. Third, obedience. What do you denounce by living the obedience? Against a social order characterized by the imposition of will, by force and violence. Ama? The domination of the weak by the strong. That's what you denounce. Why? You allow them to govern you. And please take note, fathers, this is also obedience for us. When we leave the obedience, may gracia sa pagsunod. When the bishop says, transfer. Okay, transfer. Without fanfare, then you live holy obedience. 
and openness to the loving will of God, the Father is what we proclaim, a commitment of community to freedom and justice for all. Okay? Can we read this all together? Obedience expresses faith in the God of mystery, who has revealed himself to us through his word. It enables us to lay on us for the kingdom. It is a continual willingness to go forth to discern and obey God's word. You know, the Jesuits are, when, when, when I underwent a series of Ignatian exercises, Ganun man mga Jesuits, no? They have a strong vow of obedience to the Pope, no? When the provincial tells them, this is your assignment, the provincial will present to them three options, okay? And the provincial will say, of the three options, the most difficult, the most painful is this option. We had in option three. And the Jesuit, in terms of discernment, will always choose the most difficult, the most painful, and the most challenging not the easiest, because there, grace is sufficient for you. That's spirituality. Alin dyan ang pinakamahirap. At kung minsan, yung inoobedience sa'yo, yung pinakaayaw mo, pero yun ang binibigay. Pero ang obedience, ginagawa lang yun. For us priests, that happens during diaconate and presbytery. Twice. Celibacy is only done once in the Akone. It's not done anymore in the presbytery. But in the presbytery, we do it twice. The Akone to presbytery. Why? Because you change orders. You move from the Akone to the presbyteral order. Do you promise obedience to me and my successors? Yes, I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to perfection. In the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Very powerful, no? Obedience. Cardinal Sanchez would often say, at that moment, he would cry. Because obedience is a painful experience to a number of priests. And how a number of priests have disobeyed. Now, in terms of religious, there are five feminine qualities. Mga religious, these are your five feminine qualities. Tenderness, attentiveness, receptivity, nurturance, and compassion. That is why the religious or the consecrated person is the face of the church. This is what you occupy in the church, tenderness. Attentiveness. Masikaso. Mga coordinators, masikaso sa directors, no? Pagdadating ang director, o ready na ang kape, ang ensimada, ang parse. Ready na yung papitirmahan, the budget, ready na. Na kailangan hindi mainit ang ulo ni Father, ha? Pagdating, ha? Pakainin na muna. Bago magpapirma, himukimukin muna. Compassion, receptivity, nurturance, okay? That's a retreat I gave to the sisters, okay? Now, let me continue. Dali na, madali na. The religious. Third is what we call lay empowerment. Lay people are empowered because of two things. Number one, because of their baptismal consecration. Number two, because they are engaged in the temporal order. Yun ang dalawang theology ng laity. Their sacramental consecration by virtue of baptism, in which they become alter Christus and ipse Christus. What is alter Christus? Other Christ, and Christ himself, Ipse Christus. Ipse Christus. The other Christ, Christ himself. So every baptized 
shares in the mission of Christ and His Church. That's a big shift from pre-Vatican II theology of the laity. Because in pre-Vatican II, the lay engagement is because they assist the hierarchy. No, the shifting is this. In Vatican II to PCP II, lay people have a right by virtue of their baptismal consecration. And number two, their field is what? Is the temporal order. Cardinal Chito was very strong. Sabi niya, mas malawa ang inyong involvement. Yan ang involvement ng politika, ekonomiya, kultura, social media, lahat. Ang parit obispo sa loob lang ng simbahan, tinuturuan kayo. Kaya it is a great misfortune that there are priests who request that they be dispensed in order to run to become mayor. Why? Because that can be done by the lay. Why should the priest leave the ministry? Ang hirap kayang mag-form ng pare. That is the, the tragedy of some of our brothers in the priesthood. Why so attracted to the political order when in fact that is the realm of so they are empowered because of their sacramental consecration and because they are empowered to engage in the mission of the temporal order. Okay. Now, we go now to the mission. Okay. Mission. There are five modes of mission, according to Father Kroger. What are the five specific elements of evangelization or five modes of evangelization? Number one is catechesis. Explicit gospel proclamation. Number two, liturgical life, prayer and contemplation is another one. That you evangelize because of worship, because of liturgical events, because of popular devotions. You evangelize. <coughs> Number three, you evangelize because of presence and witness. This of the five is the most powerful. Number four, commitment to social development and human liberation. This is what we call human promotion. This is engagement in the social realm, in the temporal order. And number five, ecumenism and interfaith dialogue. If you study this, brothers and sisters, you can make a formation program based on the five. Are our catechists schooled in the five modes of evangelization? Okay. Once again, say say nga natin One is catechesis. Two. Three. Four. Four, five. Okay, this is very strong in Mindanao, no? But it should also be as strong now here in Luzon and Visayas because of the number of Muslims increasing, as I mentioned. Now, now, let's go to the last before we end. Vision. What is the vision of the church? Community of disciples of Jesus Christ. So the starting point is Jesus. Christianity, according to Benedict XVI, is about Jesus of Nazareth. That's very important. Not a set of abstract truths. No. It is about Jesus of Nazareth. And thus, the call is the program of holiness. And this I would highly endorse to you. Please get a copy or download sa internet. Landas ng pagpapakabanal. Kung magagawa po ninyo na buong taong ito ay mabasa yan sapagkat yan originally ay nasa wikang Pilipino. That is the only pastoral letter ever written from <coughs> Pilipino. Wala nang mabili niya. Mada download si Steph sa internet, si BCP. 21 pages. Very simple. May guide questions pa yun. At ang landas ng pagpapakabanal ay sinulat noong Great Jubilee Year 2000 ng mga obispo ng Pilipinas. 
kasabay yan ng pastoral letter on politics, economy, culture. Yung ikaapat ay Filipino spirituality. Now, according to this, anong uri ng landas ang landas ni Kristo? Pakibasa mga, mga kapatid. Ang That cannot be translated into English. You go to the English translation, it does not capture the beauty of the Filipino original. Another, uh, well, you can use an English phrase there. The way of holiness is an I-thou relationship with Jesus. An I-thou. Buber. Martin Buber. I-thou relationship. Right? That's spirituality. Now, let's go to communion. This is from Novo Milenio Ineunte of John Paul. What are the four characteristics of communion? The spirituality of communion. Okay. Can we read number one? In this light, we must also be able to see shining on the face of the brothers and sisters around us. Okay? We see God in each brother or sister. That's communion. That's the first. It's from John Paul. Number two. An ability to think of our brothers and sisters in faith within the profound unity of the mystical body and therefore as those who are part of me. Every one is part of my life. That's communion. Maganda itong apat na ito eh. But this is not found in PCP2, huh? This is now an extrapolation which I got from Novo Milenio Ineunte. Number three. Not only as a gift for the brother or sister who has received it directly, but also as a gift for me. Okay? To see what is positive is building community. can make a recollection out of this. No? Next, number four. To know how to make room for our brothers and sisters and resisting the selfish temptations which constantly beset us and provoke competition that erase distrust and jealousy. Now please, this number four is the subject of concern of Evangelii Gaudium of Pope Francis in which hindi magkasundo ang mga tao sa loob ng simbahan. And the sad part of broken communion in which, sabi nga, when unhealthy competition, careerism, distrust, and jealousy surface in the church, we destroy the very focus of the church. Thus, the call is making room and carrying each other's burden. Okay. This is something that we need to look into deeply you know, in terms of spirituality. Spirituality. Next. Communion. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The animating force and flame of communio is God's love. So that we call the church to make the church the home and school of communion. Ito naman for Bishop Bacani. Sabi niya, if you study Acts 2, 44-45, you will discover this. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's needs. Now, what are the needs? There are four needs according to him. Bahani said this. Number one, the need to be needed. 
in a community the need to be needed. In other words, you are a never-to-be-repeated individual in the history of the world. You are precious. Make each person precious. Make each person feel he is valued. That's need to be needed. Number two, second, need to be wanted. That each person has a gift to share. You have something to share to the community. That if you have 30 catechists, each of one of them has a gift. And you need to identify that gift as a director or coordinator. What are you good at? It is accepted. Not all catechists can teach in the public schools, but a catechist can give prenuptial <coughs> seminar. Next, number three, the need to be affirmed and supported is the third need. You know, it is good for a catechist to feel that he or she is affirmed. And number four, the need to be forgiven and to forgive. Sabi niya, fourth need is this, that people make mistakes, that people fail, and thus the, the shepherd or the people in leadership must be able to forgive and must, be have, must have a big heart. Okay? Four needs, sabi yan. That, that is pangani yan. Communion. Now, let's go to the Church of the Poor. Okay. Let me simplify the Church of the Poor now. When you say Church of the Poor, it is rooted in communio. And it preaches what we call evangelical poverty. It, pro it preaches, it proclaims evangelical poverty. Preaches evangelical poverty. Okay. So, Church of the Poor is both attitudinal and structural. The attitudinal is evangelical poverty. And poverty means detachment from material possessions and trust in the providence of God. It's an attitude that we need to cultivate. Number two, structural, because we need to engage in three things, which is solidarity with, empowerment of, and advocacy for. For whom? For the poor. When you say solidarity with the poor, we are always one with the poor. That's preferential option for the poor. Gustavo Gutierrez said, option for the poor is having many friends among the poor. Solidarity. Number two, empowerment of the poor, which means we engage ourselves in the formation of the poor. We teach them how to fish. We provide for them tools for livelihood. We help them so that their lives can move from destitution to fullness of life, from fullness of livelihood, of being, empowerment. And number three, advocacy. We affect social policies. We affect legislation. 
We call attention to the powers that be and criticize legislation that are anti-poor. That's the church of the poor. That's Church of the Poor. Now, last input. I end for of lap lap. There are, according to Cardinal Quevedo, five determinants of success in the renewal projects in the church. When you have these five, it means that you're doing well. Mga indicators ito ng success sa simbahan. Determinants of success in the renewal projects in the church. Okay, number one. Can, you, can we read, please? A clearly defined diocesan pastoral trust, plan and program of action, systematically implemented by way of various follow-up and implementing mechanisms. Simply, P-I-E. Ano 